If you have diabetes, you've probably been, probably If you have diabetes, you've probably been told over and over that you've got to get your A1C down. But what does that even really mean? Welcome to Sugar High Guys. I'm PA David, and as always, I'm your glycosylated guide, and today's adventure is all about A1C and what it means. Let's talk about what A1C is, where the term came from, and why it's so important to managing your blood glucose. Hemoglobin A1C is what we use most frequently to gauge how well a diabetic person's blood sugar has been controlled for the past three months. It doesn't tell us anything about your sugar today or last night, but it gives sort of like a, a three month average telling us where you've been for the last 90 days or so. It's sort of a look in the rear view mirror of your blood sugar. So what does it mean? Where does the term come from? Well, in your red blood cells, there's this protein called hemoglobin, which is actually what gives blood its red color. Hemoglobin's job is to transport oxygen throughout the body, and red blood cells are packed with this protein. But it turns out that oxygen isn't the only thing that your blood transports throughout your body. Also swimming around in the bloodstream is tons of enzymes and hormones and salts and electrolytes and waste products and nutrients, including glucose. One thing about glucose though, is that it tends to stick to stuff. Now I don't mean just like physically sticky to your, like on your fingers, but from a chemical standpoint as well. When glucose comes into contact with hemoglobin, some of it will actually get chemically bound to the hemoglobin in a process called glycation. Now don't worry about all the specific chemistry. We don't need to stress about that right now, but think of it kind of like this. Here's a molecule of hemoglobin. Now, if it gets close enough to a molecule of glucose, kind of looks like glucose, right? They tend to bond together. So when that happened, hemoglobin just went to becoming hemoglobin A1C. Now, there's a normal amount of glucose floating around in your bloodstream. And if, if the level is normal, then you would expect that a specific amount of glucose would be likely to bump into the hemoglobin. But if there's extra sugar floating around, kind of makes sense, that even more of these are gonna get joined together with molecules of hemoglobin. So the amount of your A1C would be higher. Now, maybe you don't care about this, I don't know, but if you're curious about where the term came from, why do we call it A1C, hemoglobin A1C? It has to do with the fact that there's different types of hemoglobin. The most common type of hemoglobin in your blood is hemoglobin A, but there's also hemoglobin B, and babies in the uterus have hemoglobin F, and people with sickle cell disease have something called hemoglobin S, right? But even then, there are different subtypes within each group. When they first discovered how to identify the different types of hemoglobin, they used this mechanism where they would separate them all out based on their weight, and the first one that came out was hemoglobin A1A, and then A1B, and then followed by that was hemoglobin A1C. And this one came out heavier because it was weighed down by the glucose that was bonded to it. Get it? Anyway, enough chemistry, we don't need it. So when we talk about your A1C number, if you're in the United States, you've heard numbers like 6.5 or 7.6 or 9.3. And what that's referring to is the percent of all hemoglobin molecules that have glucose stuck to them or glycated. So for example, if I have 100 hemoglobin molecules, and eight of them have glucose bonded to them, then my hemoglobin A1C is 8%. Make sense? Now, if you happen to be watching this from Europe, you'll have heard about A1C in different units. In Europe, A1C is reported according to the standards of the International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine which is millimoles per mole. So not percent, millimoles per mole. So a European A1C would be a number like 48 or 53 or 72 millimoles per mole. So just add this to the long list of things that the United States does differently than the rest of the world when they measure things like gallons versus liters or miles versus kilometers and on and on and on. So it's this whole three month thing. How does A1C represent the overall blood sugar control for the past three months? Well, red blood cells only live for an average of four months, okay? So any red blood cells that's carrying A1C inside it 
will have died of old age and been replaced by new cells by the time 90 to 120 days have gone by, okay? So let's say your A1C is high today, but we get your blood sugar perfect like tomorrow. Even though your sugar may be perfect moving forward, all those hemoglobin molecules in your red blood cells still have that glucose stuck to them, so the A1C is still gonna look high even within a few weeks after having that perfected blood sugar. But within a few months, all the red blood cells that you have today will have gone to red blood cell heaven and get replaced by new cells, so the A1C percentage will have finally had time to change and reflect where your sugar is at now. Okay, so let's talk about what uh, A1C numbers mean to you as a person with diabetes. Where should your A1C be? Somebody with totally normal blood glucose will have an A1C less than 5.7. That's what's considered normal. So if you're 4.9 or 5.4, congratulations, you're completely normal. But if your A1C is somewhere between 5.7 and 6.4, that's higher than normal, but not high enough for us to call you diabetic. So this 5.7 to 6.4 range is what people call pre-diabetes. People with pre-diabetes are at risk of becoming diabetic, but they don't quite meet the criteria to be diagnosed with diabetes yet. Now, once that A1C reaches 6.5 or higher though, we've now crossed into diabetes land. A1C is not the only way that we can confirm diagnosis of diabetes, but having an A1C of 6.5 or higher does meet that criteria. So how about if you've already been diagnosed with diabetes, and we wanna use that A1C to determine how we're doing. Where should your A1C be? The truth is a person's hemoglobin A1C goal is sort of an individually determined thing. What's ideal for you might not necessarily be perfect for somebody else. But according to the American Diabetes Association, most people's A1C should be less than 7%. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologist Guidelines are a little more tight. They recommend getting your A1C less than 6.5. And the goal behind keeping the A1C below 6.5, or certainly at least below seven, is that we wanna reduce the chances of diabetes complications like blindness or kidney damage or amputation. It is a proven fact that most of these complications happen much less frequently if the A1C is lower. If your A1C is higher, particularly for a longer period of time, then that means your body's being exposed to all the harmful effects of poorly controlled diabetes. And the higher the A1C, the more severe the problem. But both organizations, the ADA and ACE, also recognize that with some people, we don't have to be quite as strict. In fact, in some people, pushing really hard for that really low A1C can sometimes do more harm than good. For example, if you're young and otherwise healthy and you're gonna live for another 50 to 60 years, you're gonna have a long time to live with diabetes and it's gonna have a lot of years to potentially harm your body if we're not careful. So for you, we'll wanna push really hard to protect your body from those higher glucose levels so that kidney damage, for example, doesn't develop over the next 30 or 40 years. But what if you're 85 or 90 when you finally get diagnosed with diabetes and you have some other health issues that suggest that maybe you're not gonna be here for another 30 or 40 years? Well, for that person, I'm probably not gonna push as hard and insist on a perfect A1C because some people would just pass away of old age before the diabetes ever really has a chance to cause a lot of those complications that we're worried about. And what's more, if I'm really aggressive with somebody who's older and who has a lot of other delicate health circumstances, I might actually cause them harm by putting them at risk of hypoglycemia. You know, poorly controlled blood glucose can cause a lot of harm in the long run. But somebody who's had a couple of strokes or heart attack in the past, a really good hypoglycemia episode could be catastrophic right now. You see the difference? We have to weigh long-term benefit versus short-term safety. So if you're curious about my opinion and my approach toward diabetes treatment, I tend to side a little bit more with the ACE guidelines. Again, this is just my personal position, but I tend to agree that the science supports that most people will do best in the long run if we can keep that A1C below 6.5, unless there's a medical reason that makes that a bad idea. So here's a question. What happens if you've been trying really hard and you've made improvements in your A1C, but you're still not quite to that 7% goal. Like what if you started at 11 and you've been busting your butt and now you're at a solid nine? Should we beat you up and call you a failure? Should I shame you into trying harder? Look guys, here's a fact. 
any improvement in your A1C improves your situation. Nine might not be where you want to stay, but if you started at 12, I can't even begin to describe how much better off you are than where you were. Diabetes is a journey, guys, and we need to set realistic goals that are going to allow you to make little victories, consistent victories as you keep moving forward. Every tiny bit of improvement reduces your chances of complications later on, and you deserve to be congratulated for every step you make toward that goal. Don't quit. You didn't get here overnight, and it's okay if you don't get here overnight. So what have been your A1C victories? Share your stories with me and the rest of the group in the comments below about where you are and how far you've come. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep in touch and you can keep me updated on your progress and I will A1C you on the next sugar high. I am not proud of that. That is dumb, but I'm going with it. <laughs>